What's up, world? I am TJ, and this is Native Res Media, your place for opinionated tech news, reviews, and entertainment. And today we'll be looking at a capture card. This is the Kahami 4K HD video capture card, and I pronounce it Kahami. I think it's Kohami or Kohami, but either way it goes, this is a capture card that's capable of capturing 4K 30 frames per second or 1440p at 60, 1080p at 120, so on and so forth. So decent amount of uh, capturing range there. And it also supports multiple different codecs. And I'll go over that a little bit later in this video. With that being said, we're gonna go over what comes in the box. We're gonna be going over some of the tech specs, look and feel, and I'll be going over how to get it set up on your PC and, or your Mac or whatever you're gonna be using. And that's pretty much it. And then I'll come back around and give you my conclusion of this device. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this review. And of course, as always, we'll start off by going over what comes in the box. Nice looking box here, slide out nice and sturdy. You got your Kahami branding on the top there, along with some pictures and whatnot. And let's get this open. Got packaging here, which held the USB-C to USB-A cable that you plug into this here. The device itself is wrapped inside of this plastic and you have your user manual at the bottom, which I don't need because I've hooked up so many of these things that I got it down pat. So we're gonna put this back in there, close that up. Oh, I forgot one thing, let me put this in here too. Oh, and also mine came with an HDMI cable. I'm not sure yours will if you purchase this from Amazon. This was sent over to me by Kohami, or Kuhami, <laughs> to do this review on. So uh, thanks, uh, came with that. Uh, some of them do, even if you purchase them from Amazon. Go on the website, check it. But uh, that was a good little gift there. And we're gonna jump into the tech specs here. This supports HDMI input with loop out support up to 4K 60 Hertz. So if you are inputting your laptop or your gaming system in here, you want it to go directly to your television so you use the HDMI out so that there is low latency or zero latency gameplay on your end from what you're seeing, and then the capture part that goes into your computer that you're gonna be recording that footage on, that might have a slight delay. Now, as I said, you can record and preview up to 4K 30 hertz that is on your computer, and you have video capture format, let's see here, YUY2, RGB32, and NV12. So those are the three main capturing codecs that you can use. This supports Android mobile phone capture, recording, and streaming. Supports third-party software. Of course, most of us use OBS. And this is compatible with the UVC and UAC protocol, so plug and play. And the dimensions, for those of you who want to know, uh, 165 by 70 by 25 millimeters. Uh, that is 6.3 by 2.75 by 0.98 inches. And lastly, the weight is 150 grams. And I'm gonna slide this box off to the side. We're gonna take a look at the device itself. Very futuristic, very spaceship looking. Uh, you have a lot of silver on here with some piano black running down the center here. You got the Kohami logo and flanking that you have some red accents that do light up. On the bottom you have some venting with some red accents underneath that and on both sides you have some venting that is uh, also painted red. This is built mostly of plastic. I don't think there's any metal around here. It does have some rubber grips on the bottom to keep it from sliding while it's on your desk. Of course, you have your ACMI in. That's gonna come from your console or your laptop or whatever device you're gonna be capturing from, camera, whatever. Uh, then you have an HDMI out that'll go towards your monitor or to your television so you can have that zero latency gaming experience or if you're gonna be just viewing the footage, it'll be zero latency going out of that. Now, on the opposite side of that, you have your USB type C port that goes from here to a USB A to your computer and flanking that on both sides you have your headphone and mic in and the mic in will record the audio directly to the audio captured with your gaming footage and things like that so if you want to keep that separate I would advise you to record that directly into OBS on a separate track using a separate mic or something like that 
this is nice to have just in case you need something on the fly and you want to record while you are gaming it'll stick with that footage and the volume it's kind of hard to adjust unless the mic you're using has a volume adjustment knob now the headphone same thing uh, you can listen to your audio feed coming directly out of your device like your computer or whatever your console and go directly to your headset uh, you can adjust the volume on that but you would have to be able to adjust that on your headset as well now I'm gonna go over to my computer get this thing hooked up record some footage and go from there so getting this capture card hooked up is not too hard I have everything in front of me that I'm going to be using of course the capture card USB C to A cable and an HDMI cable. I'm gonna be using my laptop to capture from. It's a 1440p laptop, so it'll output the 1440p signal into my main computer here into OBS to record. So let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna connect the USB-C into the back of the Kahami capture card and take the USB-A plug and plug it into my computer. Normally you don't wanna use an extension, but I already have a long ex extension going directly from the back of my motherboard to the front here. And I'll just use that. And as you can see, the car lights up. You see a solid red light once it's just connected to your computer. Next, I'm going to take the HDMI cable, plug it into the back of my laptop, and then plug it into the HDMI in on the Kahami card. And as you can see, once the laptop is outputting a signal into the Kami card, you can see it's starting to blink. Final steps are to tidy up your wires and to go into OBS and get everything set up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up a screen recording of how to set this thing up in OBS. And now I'm going to go over how to set things up inside of OBS here. Got my laptop off to the right. Got the Kahami capture card here. You can see it blinking. That shows that there is an image or a video going into the Kahami capture card going into my computer. It's getting power. That's why the red light is blinking there, but it's not recording anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start recording on OBS and I'm going to pull it up on the screen so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, yours won't look like this. If you look at all my scenes here, I have different capture cards that I've been going through. So that's where they're on here. So I created a new scene. You hit plus, name it. I named mine Kuhami. And you would not see this display capture here because that would be blank. I created this so you can see what I'm doing on screen. You hit plus, And what you want to do is hit video capture device. So I want to add a video capture device. So once I hit this, what I see on my laptop is going to pop up on the screen because OBS will automatically recognize the Kuhami capture card that is plugged in and bring it up on the screen. I'm going to name it Kuhami cap, bam, and you should be seeing what I'm seeing on the screen, just not scaled correctly. So what I'm gonna do is turn that off, pull this back up so you can see how to set this up. The first device box here, the drop down, it should be automatically selected 4K USB 3.0 Capture Pro. That is the capture card. Go down, you don't want to deactivate it, that turns it off. You can configure the video directly here. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, things like that. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at zero and close that out. So anyways, uh, you go on down here and let me make sure that I didn't hit anything. Let's change that to zero. Oh, it's not gonna let me. Let me go back. Apply. All right, cool. Anyways, so uh, you go from the configure video there, go down to device default on the resolution, click the drop down box, and you hit custom. So this is where it makes a little bit of a difference here. You can go in, I'm gonna go 1440p because my laptop outputs at 1440p. And once you go 1440p, the frames per second, I wanna go 60 because this captures 1440p at 60, 4K at 30, or 1080p up to 120. Now, one thing to note, if I go up here and I go to 1080p, the video format can be a little bit different than at 1440p. So let's see, uh, let me go back, 1080. Video format, I can go to NV12, P010, or YUY2. 
P010 is a high dynamic range video capture, so you can capture high dy dynamic range 1080p from your device into OBS using 1080p. But for now, I'm going to keep it at here. Uh, the oh, let me I'm going to change it to 1440p. Video format is going to be NV12. Color space will be Rec 709. If I was using high def, I'd go down to one of these 2100 PQ or HLG. You want to know a little bit more about that? Google it. <laughs> uh, color range is going to be set at limited. Uh, you can change it to full. It kind of fuzzes out the video because it's not detecting the full color range. So keep it at limited. Go down here. I can use hardware decoding when available. Uh, apply rotation data from camera if any it's no camera hooked up it's a capture card and i can use a custom audio device but i'm not i'm just going to keep that the default there and as you see on the kami card here it should be solid red because it is capturing so hit okay and then i'm going to turn this on and you should now be able to see what i am seeing on my screen the scaling is off you can only see partial here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on here and i'm going to scale this down to 1080p my base canvas in obs right now is 1080p this is a 1440p signal going into obs so therefore i'm going to scale it down so that it's going to capture the full screen and you can see it if i was uh doing a recording in 1440p my base canvas i can go into obs set it to 1440p and it, I wouldn't have to do any of that scaling. Now, with that being said, when it comes to audio, if I hit play, targeted sports modes that are built you should be able to hit, the hear the audio. So I can't hear it coming up. out of speakers. It's you not gonna be coming out in the right, recording in the video I'll right run, now because more, it's not coming out. I can't run, hear the monitoring. If run. you wanna hear the monitoring, you basically, let me shrink this down. You would go here. So if you see when I press play, Outdoor you can see walk. The Kami cap is moving, hiking. so it is recording it. If I want to hear it coming cycle, out of the speakers, cricket, I go yoga, to Advanced, Audio Properties. Cycle, Let's pull this down. Kami so capture right there. Uh, monitoring is off. In the I want to turn that on. And I want to keep it on monitoring and output. If I do uh, monitoring rowing, only, elliptical. I can hear it coming from the speakers, but it's no longer being captured in the... Uh, audio recording if i do monitoring and output so it'll mo i can monitor it and it's going to output it so that you can hear it in the recording uh and i can close that one other thing to note if i scroll up here desktop audio is also being captured because the kahami capture card is going through the desktop and coming out of my speakers if i turn that on it kind of doubles up the audio a little bit. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to basically just capture one and I'm just going to capture directly from the source. So I'm going to turn off the desktop audio capture. And that is pretty much it. I can come back, scale that to the 1080p and done. You should be off and running. So what do you think? Is this the next capture card for you? Overall, it's uh, competing with the Aver Media Live Gamer 3 Extreme or the Elgato HD60. Those go for upwards of $180, $200 uh, for basically the same features. Some of those have some extra features. Of course, the Elgato has the, I think it's like a record back where you can record the last 10 seconds of footage if you had a good shot or last 30 minutes, things like that. So those do come with some extra features. This has no included software. Software. you just use your OBS free software things like that but ultimately this goes on sale I've seen it as low as 110 bucks right now it's 139.99 there might be coupons but even at that price this is a good deal considering the quality I have the uh, mirror box HD capture device and it records up to I believe it's a uh, 1080p 60 frames per second uh, the quality on that the color accuracy is not on par with this the color accuracy on this is better and this records higher resolution of course this costs 30 bucks more but uh, I mean that's 30 bucks more for higher resolution recording and better quality even if it costs the same I would choose this over the mirror box capture card that I have the only thing that the mirror box has that this one doesn't is the ability to record directly from my laptop or from my steam deck over USB-C this one you'd have to use a converter to get it to go into here 
via HDMI, but whatever, that's not a big deal. Those things are fairly inexpensive. So uh, other than that, if you guys have any questions or comments, please do them down below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Peace out.